Hi everyone, welcome to the sleep webinar. How are you guys? Nice to see you all here. Uh, as you know, we are going to walk through all these Fridays and Beginner Corners webinar uh, along with all the, the technical <laughs> Thanks, Annie. Thank you. Hi. Uh, I don't think all technical studies possible in the most correct market. The idea here is to provide you and explain you all how to use all the tools that we have available in the forex market. Uh, I know that there are, are unlimited numbers of tools these days. The fact is that trying to find the one that fits better or the one that's better to apply in a certain market moment, right, is always the key of success. Anyway, today we are going to talk a bit about chart formations, right? Uh, uh, we are going to talk about the few figures Sorry, we see in market. And we are going to start, okay, uh, with an, a small introduction before jumping to the to the figures. Anyway, here is the Euro dollar daily chart. I want to show you um, this particular one because it's one of the most interesting things we have seen. We are going to talk a bit about tips in the forex market to trade figures and such. Uh, you know, this kind of figures are can be classified in different types, right? In two bigger groups, that is the ones that involve a trend change, right? And the ones that are understood as a trend continuation figure. Today we will discuss on uh, what we call a uh, trend change formation, right? The ones that happen at the end of a certain bullish or bearish trend and usually mean a change of that previous trend or at least a strong, strong corrective movement against it. There is, in fact, a third group of figures, right, that they have a certain and very particular characteristics that will force us to leave them aside from this uh, trend change or trend continuation figures, right? By themselves, they're going to tell us uh, certain information. Anyway, we are going to see those also but not today. Today we will focus just in the ones that we call trend change formation, right? As it happens with almost any technical study, these figures are not a 100% reliable thing to base uh, our trades, right? That's why it's, for me, pretty important to know not only where to buy and sell, uh, but also where to protect our investments, right? Setting the right stop loss, right, in case of the, the, the forecast or the market price or the movements that not get accomplished. I have also a theory about that. We are going to talk it as long as we develop the, the webinar. So, as I was saying, trend change formations. The most common or the most known trend formations that we apply in the first market are the double roofs, the double floors, the triple roofs, the triple floors head and shoulders, inverted head and shoulders, and a couple of reversal day, well, reversal island figures that in fact are candle formations that are more, much more typical of the stock market. We don't apply them too much to Forex, right? So we are going to leave them for the for the spread of the figures, right? We are not going to discuss that today. On the contrary, we call trend continuation figures usually triangles. Right, and all the small triangles and formations similar to triangles, just, just such as flag, wedge, pennants, etc. Anyway, let's start talking a bit about what we understood as the double roof. As you can see, euro dollar daily chart. Of course, I'm going to show you the examples in in bigger time frames, right? Uh, because they are always more clear to detect in bigger time frames, daily or above. That does not mean you cannot see these same figures, okay, uh, in maybe an hour, an hourly chart. We can, and of course the, the, the results will be uh, approximately the same, but the idea is that as bigger as reliable is the figure. So I would suggest you not to take a look at much uh, figures below four hour charts. I prefer to take a look at figures when we are talking about daily charts because uh, of course maybe we can be short-term traders but uh, at least they will tell me where the dominant trend will be once the figure is complete. Anyway, this is a typical double roof, right? This is a 
technical figure that applies to bullish market, right? The double roof should be at the end of the bullish trend. Let me review a bit the chart so you can see that we are coming from a previous strong bullish trend, right? And the pair reached that double roof. It reached that 160.30 area, okay? In, in the first place, right? Proceed to a corrective movement and test the same area for the second time. When we are talking about a daily chart, right, a couple of pips, higher or lower, is not that much. I would say that even 15 pips will be uh, still understood difference, I mean. 15 pips difference uh, will be anyway understood as a figure, as a double roof or a double floor. We are going to talk about those now. But and not much more. On the contrary, if we are talking of smaller time frames like the early chart or, or, the, or the even lower 30 minutes, 15 minutes or so, and the fact is that the price should be exact, right? Should be exact same level to make those smaller figures a bit more reliable. Anyway, typical of a bullish market, right? And means at least a descendant corrective movement, right? This, it, if you take a look at charts uh, and you are constantly watching the market with not too much indicators, you will realize that it's a very common figure, right? We see it several times. And it's in, among the most reliable ones, okay? Uh, meaning it's a, a technical figure that is pretty common and reliable, something we should follow, okay? As you can see, we have the both maximums, right, on the same level that act as resistance, right? And so intermediate point, right? <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> that separates those both maximums that we usually understood as valley, right? Or a neckline, right? I draw the neckline of the figure in the 53 area, 5297, this particular line, but this the area, okay? So, we understand that when price breaks below the neckline, in the case of a double roof, we are at the beginning of this formation, right? Which objective, objective sorry, will be the same distance from this neckline to those maximums. Meaning, in all the figures, the, uh, the target area is usually measured from that neckline to that, uh, the top of the figure, right? In this particular case, we are talking about seven. 130 pips, sort of here, right? Around here, okay? A level that, in fact, was accomplished. Uh, but there's also something very important we need to consider when talking about uh, the figures, right? Keep in mind that it's very important. We discussed this past session. Volume is key in the first market, right? So, we have to see that the volume in the forex market in between the points that the two are highs, right, should be decreasingly slowly, right? But at the moment of the neckline break, volume should be high. As higher the volume at the moment of the break, as interesting or as stronger will be the confirmation that the figure is complete and the downside will extend, right? If a pullback trade place, which is, is not just the case, right, the pair fell, and we may have lost a couple of hundred, right, of those 700 pips, right? If a pullback is accomplished, sorry, uh, volume during the pullback should be low, right? And when price starts progressing to the final target, volume should be growing again, okay? That's very, very important to understand. Anyway, another figure pretty much similar to the double roof is, of course, the double floor, okay? Again, it's a figure typical. This is the dollar transition weekly chart, okay? Uh, and I remember this one. I, I, I'm showing you the figures that has been, has been extremely profitable for me, myself. Uh, I will never forget about this one. Anyway, this is the technical profile of the double floor, right? It's pretty similar to the previous one, but inverted. That means that it's typical of a bearish market, right? And of course, it means a bullish corrective movement, okay? And again, as the double roof is highly profitable at 
pretty common, right? In this particular case, we have two minimums, right? Of the same level that acts as support for the price action and an intermediate point, right? That separates both, right? Forming the neckline. When this neckline is broken, again, price action should accomplish the target of the height of the figure, right? Not too much more to add to this particular one. Again, volume should be uh, <coughs> descendant in between the points one and two, right? High volume during the break, right? Smaller volume during the pullback, and again, stronger when it rises back. If you take this chart and turn it to the daily, you will see that those conditions are, are uh, pretty, pretty easy to, to see and realize according to what we have discussed also a couple of weeks ago, the measuring the length of the can. You don't need to add an indicator of volume to understand how the volume of the market is. It's enough to take a look at the daily candle, the weekly candle, or the chart candle. You are starting at the precise moment and see if current candle of the candle that breaks, right, that confirms the figure, is at least two or three times uh, the average of a, that particular time frame in the, that particular pair. Meaning, if a weekly chart of dollar to ten tends to move, I don't know, let's say 200 pips, right, if the volume break in the weekly one, uh, it's at least 400 or 600, right, pips, that will confirm me that the figure and the volume is high and the figure will probably complete. Okay? Anyway, I will explain a bit of a triple floor and a triple roof, sorry, and I'm going to make a pause for questions, right? I will uh, follow in also this example for you, prepare this example for you of the dollar Swiss franc about what we consider a triple roof. In fact, as you may see, the pair has reached the area almost four times, right? Two, three, four, and this is good. Even could be considered fifth time the price has it around those levels, right? Again, the triple roof is typical of the bullish market. I have to have a previous bullish trend, right? If not, it's not uh, correct. And implies a bearish corrective movement is highly reliable, but it's not a common figure. So when, when talking about double, uh, triple roofs or triple, triple floors, then you can take a look of this, to this one in maybe one hour charts, right? When you are in intraday trade and you found a pair that reached the bottom and we are seeing it triple bottom in the early chart, well, then it turns much more reliable because it's not so common, okay? Not as common as the double one. Again, it's formed by three or more maximums, right, neckline, and the price behavior and the volume behavior, sorry, it's again as we have this cast for previous fever. Higher when we break, sorry, uh, smaller on pullbacks, higher on accelerations, okay? Uh, that's really, really important to pay attention. I have in this same chart, Okay, I will move it slowly. A couple of more examples that I want to share with you. Okay, in this particular zone, right, we have two maximums at the same level, right, 97.74. Should be those two maximums in here and in here consider a double roof? The fact is no. No, because we are not in a bullish trend, right? We are just in the middle of the bearish trend corrective movement, and these highs are unable to reach uh, or overcome better recent highs, right? We are talking about the daily chart. So these two levels in here, right, despite the pair afterwards resume its bearish trend, should not be considered a double roof, right? These two highs in here and in here. This is the wrong analysis. Why? Because this, uh, this figure is a double roof. It's not at the end of a bullish trend, but in this case, we are trying to find this figure at the end of a bearish one, right? So, that's not the way to do it. Remember, when we are talking about a double roof or triple roof at the end of a bullish trend, 
inverted one at the end of bearish trends, right? Uh, and in, if we want, we could understand this lows around here and here as a double floor, right? But Bali zone comes in the middle, in the neckline around 97.80 in this particular case. And the fact is that price was unable to break higher, right? So if I'm going to understand this movement as a figure, right, maybe I could understand it as a double floor, but as the price does not break higher, but on the contrary, break below low, right, the figure should be discarded. And anyway, I have not had a chance to trade, right, because it has never broke above this trend line, okay? Uh, neckline, sorry. Sorry, I will erase this. Uh, this circle. Anyway, uh, in here we have a smaller case, but anyway, trade of a one over what we consider a triple floor, right? Price reaching the same level one, two, three times, right? Again, typical of what's a bearish market following a bearish trend, right? And once the figure is complete, should imply a bullish corrective movement. In this particular case, this, uh, the neckline or the, the zone to break, right, is just one 130 pips, okay, so maybe smaller, maybe not as uh, attractive as the one seen before, but still valid, okay. We have the three minimums at the same level that are support. We have uh, the two intermediate points in these two red candles, right, that act as the neckline, right, and the formation appears once the, the, the neck is broken. In, in fact, if you see in this particular case, price retreats and touches again the, the area before reaching the target, right? But that's something extra I want to, to share with you. But I will make a small poll, right? And if you have comments, okay, we have a couple of uh, questions. We have Pip Demon asking a question. Yes. I would say, say the same. Uh, you you are asking, isn't through the volume in Forex market variable and depends on the broker? Because you can see only the volume of your broker clients and not the total volume of the Forex market. At least that's why I understood. Exactly that is what I'm telling you not to use a volume indicator, right? No matter which broker you are using, okay, no, no matter what, the in volume indicators will show you just the volume uh, of that particular broker, as you may, as, as you have said, right? But um, take a look at this. Uh, what I'm uh, I'm suggesting you to do, right? In the dollar Swiss franc, by this time, right? The average movement was 120 pips per day, right? We may talk about an average, right? See this candle that is also almost twice that. Well, that's a candle that's showing me a strong increasing volume, right? Let me change the chart. Let's go back to the euro. Okay. Sorry. And even in the early charts, right? In the early chart, in the 30-minute chart, you can see that, right? This candle, this first, or this one, that is two or three times the average the pair moves, right? It's an indication that there is a strong selling pressure or strong selling volume in the market. So measuring these candles, meaning the price action, yeah, right? You have an idea of where the volume of the market is in the whole market, right? Because price action does not depend on, on your particular broker, right? This price action, right, this increasingly falling rallies are showing you that all across the world <laughs> the poor euro is falling, right? But long candles tend to signal for me more increasing volume, right? To downside in this case, to the upside in this case. Of course, they, they reach the upper bottom or has a reversal in the first market. But usually, when a candle is that big, it's telling you that the trend will probably continue and there is a strong volume in the market. And for the break of figures, I tend to use this, right? Watching the length of the candle rather than a volume indicator. It's much more reliable, much more easy to see and to understand. And of course, uh, uh, accompli involves much more information. Do you see? We are not talking about this particular broker volume. That's the idea. And the DAB says, currently dollar Swiss franc could be say that making a double bottom. Yeah, we can take a look at that. Give me a second, I will change the chart back to 
two dollars with Frank. Okay, it's the it's this one. Sorry, in daily chart. Okay. In fact, right, as I was telling you, okay, uh, you have to, sorry, I will try to not to move it that much, okay? Uh, as I was saying, the difference, maybe 10, 20 pips could be okay. The fact is that today we have felt almost 10, 50 pips below current one. But still, if price managed today to close a bit more higher than this level, well, we can think about that. However, take a look at the value or the probable uh, neckline zone, which is 89.40 recent highs, right? This is the neckline of that probable zone floor, as long as the pair did not fall uh, lower, right? So trying to see this figure when the neckline is not even close, it's a bit more risky because you are going to have the idea <coughs> that the pair, <coughs> sorry, that the pair should start a recovery, right? And the fact is that that recovery could take much longer than you expect. Besides, where good are you going to place your stop loss if you decide to buy the cross today based, of course, just on the figure, right? Uh, uh, that's not too, too much of a real thing, okay? So unless the neckline, <laughs> unless the neckline is broken to the upside, I would say that well, tonight we are seeing lower lows in the cross and more bearish momentum to come, okay? But that's a personal opinion. Anyway, um, regarding to, to this kind of figures and the volume breaks, right? Uh, we have seen in the dollar, uh, euro dollar case, sorry, that the pair did not accomplish a pullback after uh, breaking on the neckline. Several most of the times, you know, figures tend to accomplish that pullback, okay? So where do I place my stop loss and where do I place my take profit according to this kind of figures, right? Let's go back to the euro dollar example, right? If the break, if the neckline is the 53 level as we discussed previously, okay? And I'm trading the daily chart. Well, I could see the pair maybe make making a, a spike above this level in an intraday recovery, right, in the middle of the pullback. So I would say that accordingly to the daily range of the cross, I would place my stop loss in between 30, 50 pips above that trend line, right? Not much, uh, above, above that neckline, sorry, not much more, right? And of course, if we have a daily close inside or above the neckline in this particular case that we didn't, right, that should force us to close the, the, the trade because the, the figure has failed, right? Or at least the, broke, the break of the neckline has failed. One thing that I tend to do, no matter what time frame I'm trading with figures, and uh, that will apply for all on any figure, is that I tend to calculate, right? Uh, the, the theory says that the pair should replicate this rally, right? 730 pips to the downside, right? What I tend to do is reduce that to a 60, a 70 percent, right? If we are talking about 730, let's 200, let's say 500 pips, right? That will be the level. Okay, the 70% will be 500 pips. Why? Because you may see that the pair will try, will accomplish pretty fast, sort of speaking, that 60, 70% of the, the rally, right? And in the middle, maybe made a strong comeback or pullback that will scare you to death and probably get you to move away from the market, right? Only to recover and finally complete the target. See the case? of the dollar Japanese chain is a weekly double um, floor with a scotch, right? We have a total of three, 740 pips, right? The pair rose 500 pips, right? And fell back, right? Even below that neckline, despite only with a candle shadow, right? We don't have a close below that level, right? But anyway, the pair re retreats to, the, to this area to finally complete the 700 pips, right? So 
It's a very, very wise and important thing to consider reducing to the 60, 70 percent, right? Will depend on the strength of the trend. The target of the fever. That's not in the books. That's something I have made for myself. I don't know, maybe it could be useful for you, just a suggestion or an idea you can use. But by empirical observation, I have noticed that the pairs tend to accomplish that 60-70% pretty fast, right? And then anything can happen. We can see strong pullback, like in this case, or a strong continuation towards the, the limit. Who knows, right? I, I rather gain 50 than uh, lose 1, okay? Uh, in waiting for gain, winning 700, right? I, 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 that's me. Right, you are free to do whatever you like. Anyway, a suggestion. Anyway, and just uh, unclear. Okay, any other questions or comments? I sorry, I removed the camera a bit. I will refresh charts, and we will continue with another thing, another example. Right, another very famous figure I have followed for months because it was clear in the weekly chart. This is pound Japanese then in September before crisis in America, just before the crisis exploded in the United States. And as you can see, this is what we call a head and shoulders figure, right? A head and shoulders is also typical of the bullish market, right? And of course, when the figure is complete, it implies a bearish corrective movement or a strong bearish trend starting, okay? And this head and shoulders figures tends to be one of the most reliable ones, right? Uh, it's not as common as double roofs or double floors, but not as hard to see as a triple floors or triple roof. Let's say that it's in the halfway in between, between those two, right? And as you can see, it's formed by three maximums, right? The first and the last at the same level, right? Those are the shoulders. And the one in the center, clearly higher, that will be the head, right? Uh, if we put together all the minimums in between uh, those highs, we have two values in this particular case, right? That will be our, sorry, our neckline, right? The fact is that in this particular case, I draw that line to show you the shoulders, but the, the real head of the figure, right? It's the top of the head, so this is a particular figure, right, of 3,000 pips, okay? If we take a look at the behavior of the price in the break, right, you see a candle that is double or triple, the usual pretty small pullback. The fact is that you may know Japanese crosses are not the most uh, uh, Pullbacks performer, right? Japanese Chen hardly completes pullbacks, Japanese Chen cross in general. And of that 300 pips, the pair accomplished pretty fast 1,000, 3,000, sorry, 1,700 or so, right? In fact, it extends even lower, right? And completed a retracement pretty strong before resuming its bearish trend. Okay, that's why I said better move away of market area. Uh, again, the volume behavior is pretty important, right? It has to decrease in between those two points, the two values, okay? Uh, the, the break of the neckline should be high volume. If we have pullbacks back slow, and when the pair resumes trend, it should increase again, okay? Uh, and of course, a final figure, it's something a bit more actual and that may, we may find a bit more interesting, right? Uh, this is an uh, American dollar, Canadian dollar daily chart in current days, right? This is going on right now. As you may see, we have an inverted head and shoulders, right? The first shoulder, uh, the head, the second shoulder around here, and the neckline in the middle around 97.10 that has been broken recovered again, but now we are steady about those levels. The idea is that this figure should accomplish around 300 pips to the upside, right? So we may say that the pair may approach to parity. But anyway, 
uh, again, what's important in here uh, is that it picks up a bearish mark. Okay, I cannot try to determine an inverted head and shoulder in the middle of a bullish trend. Okay, again, it's not as common as double roofs or double floors, but more common than triple ones, right? And in this particular case, we have three different minimums, right? With the one in the middle at the lower level, right? One thing. So the neckline is broken, we said the figure is accomplished. In this particular case, we have the neckline broken, we have a candle opening above it, right? And the pair is stopping us for three days, right? This is because the price fell back. However, and despite that movement, right, maybe this one as long as, maybe the pair as long as above this area could extend this game. Let's see what happens in the future. Anyway, what I forgot to say about the figures and that I found really important is the slope, okay? If you have an, a, a head and shoulder, and back to the head and shoulder figure, I will erase this one, right? So the, 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 the neckline or the shoulders should have a slightly bullish inclination. That means that the second shoulder could be at the same level of the first one or a bit, a bit higher. Right? And the same goes for the, for the neckline. It could be horizontal or it could have a slightly bullish inclination. Not the, this case, but just you to understand that, okay? Shoulders and neckline should have a slightly bullish inclination or at least be flat at the same level. Because if we have the inverted situation when we are talking about a head and shoulders, right? With a bearish slope where the first shoulder is much more higher than the second or the neckline has this kind of inclination, right? The figure is then no re not reliable and it's hard to see the price action accomplishing the target of that figure. In fact, this is one of the less reliable things that could happen to a head and shoulders, right? It has, if we are going to talk about head and shoulders, it has to be bullish or at least flat, right? Not bearish. And of course, for the inverted head and shoulders, it's more or less the same case, right? In this, case, in this example, the, both the shoulders and the neckline should be flat or at least have some sort of bearish inclination, right? If you take a look at this particular one, the second shoulder is barely below the first one, which is good, right? It's not something good that we should worry. We should worry if the second shoulder was around these slopes. If a bullish slope in the virtual head and shoulders, then that or in the neckline, right? The neckline also has slightly bearish inclination. Very very limited, very timid in this particular case, right? But it's slightly bearish. Right? So that's a good a uh, good thing, okay? If the neckline again is bare bullish, then that makes the figure non-reliable, okay? Is that clear? It's very, very important, right? Uh, as we said before, if the difference of pips in between the, these levels are in the daily chart, when we are talking about 10, 20 pips, that's not too big deal. But if we are talking about a bit more, then yeah, that's a big deal. And in that case, the slope of the shoulders and the necklines will be much more interesting or much more important Right, and make the figure less reliable and not the one to trade. Okay, we have to discard that kind of figure. Okay, and remember the seven percent rule. Anyway, uh, uh, do you have any more questions or comments? I see here one from Didab. Do you like to choose your entries based on daily candles close and or move to a lower time frame? Uh, yeah, I I do both things, right? It will depend on the time of the day I'm trading. Usually when the Asian session opens, I would lo I love to see the daily candles, right? But in between the mid-European session and the American session, full session, that's, that's my my hour to, to be awake and working, uh, I rather take a look at four-hour charts and even take uh, trades in one hour or not less, but in between one hour and four hours. Okay, but yeah, I like to choose my entries based on, on daily candles, and I like a lot to take a look at supports and resistance levels and price action 
rather than confirm everything with technical indicators, the technical science. Okay. Anyway, no, that's me. So everyone has its own strategy and way to, to see the market. And mm, there's no way we can say that a certain way is better or worse than the other. So, anyway, do you have questions, comments, ideas, suggestions? Okay, nothing. Or I have been too clear, right? Or, or your position. <laughs> okay, no questions, no comments? Sure? Okay, remember that we are going to left this last 10, 15 minutes of every webinar, okay, to, to talk about any kind of doubts you have regarding technical analysis. If I don't have the perfect answer for that time, I will find it for you, okay? But the idea here is that uh, I will go in to answer anything regarding technical analysis or even some fundamentals. I love fundamentals also, but I don't consider them as strong as technical. Okay, no questions? No comments? Okay, then. Thanks all for being here. It has been my pleasure as usual. And hope to see you back soon. Next webinar is um, Sunday with the live market opening, okay? Thanks again. Enjoy your weekend and bye-bye.